Hello again, my little conscripts, and welcome to another Mordian Glory Warhammer 40k video. In today's episode, we shall be casting our ever critical eye over another data sheet, and this time we will be delving into the murky world of allies with the agents of the Imperium. And the unit which we will be delving into today is the Grey Knight Terminator Squad. And I know there are a lot of guard players who are very interested in this unit and what it can do for their armies. And because of this, let's not mess around. Let's step into the Teleportarium and deep strike right into this episode. Attention conscripts, I am excited to announce the launch of the official second Mordian Glory channel. If you're curious, click on the link down in the description and head over to Mordian Glory Games. I upload to the channel several times a week with all sorts of fun and silly gaming content. So if you're jonesing for even more Mordian Glory content, then head on over to Mordian Glory Games and don't forget to subscribe. As is tradition, let us begin with a cheeky overview of this unit's stat line. Grey Knight Terminators have a movement of 5 inches. This might seem kind of slow, but remember they do have the core ability Deep Strike, so they can teleport in and rapid ingress in fairly easily and get to where they need to go. They also have a fantastic defensive stat line, especially when you compare it to a lot of other guard infantry options, with a toughness of 5, a 2 plus armor save with a 4 plus invulnerable save, and a stonking 3 wounds. Combine this with a leadership of 6 plus and a surprisingly high objective control of 2, and you have a unit which can get to an objective hold that objective and even if someone tries to sneak it away from them will probably have enough OC to keep it under your control as well. But it's not just about the punch that they can take and the objective that they can control. Of course, when you're looking at a unit like this, you want to consider the damage output that they have. So what are the Grey Knights bringing to the battlefield? How are they snapping necks and cashing checks? Well, you have a unit with five Terminators, one Justicar and four regular Terminators, and each model is equipped with a Storm Bolter and a Nemesis Force Weapon. One of your regular Terminators can swap out his Storm Bolter for an Incinerator, a Silencer or a Psy Cannon. One of the regular Terminators can take an Ancient's Banner, and a different one can also take an Arthesium. And no, you can't have the guy with the Banner also have the Arthesium. That is specifically not allowed on the data sheet. Some of these weapons are going to be eminently familiar with guard players. For example, the Storm Bolter is exactly the same as that which you find on pretty much any of your guard vehicles. It's got a 24 inch range, it's rapid fire 2 with 2 attacks, meaning in half range it'll get 4 attacks. Ballistic skill of 3 plus, which I suppose is a little better than your standard guard ballistic skill of 4 plus, but remember, most guard units aren't going to be getting take aim, so they'll hit on 3s anyway. And then you've got strength for AP 0, damage 1. But then we've got some of the more unique ranged weapons. The Incinerator is like a heavy flamer, except that it's an extra strength, which is nice. It means it can wound Toughness 3 infantry on 2s. The Silencer has sustained hits 1 with 6 attacks, and it's kind of like a heavy bolter, but it's not getting AP and it's only damage 1. But I guess you do get more attacks out of it. And then you have the Psy Cannon, which is... Also a psychic weapon. I think all the granite weapons are psychic weapons apart from the storm bolters. And it's got a 24 inch range. It's got three attacks at strength eight, AP minus one, and two damage. It's kind of like an old school auto cannon. Out of these bigger guns, you can only take one of them. And if it was down to me, I'd take the side cannon every single time. Sure, it's only got three shots, but this is 10th edition and you always want to go for the biggest punches weapons in case you come across something that's a little bit tougher, like a vehicle or a monster. But in truth, I don't think you're taking Grey Knight Terminators for their ranged weapons. I mean, after all, we're the Imperial Guard. We're bringing the guns. What we need our allies to do is cover a gap that we can't cover ourselves. And that is close combat. Grey Knight Terminators each come with a Nemesis Force weapon. It's four attacks at weapon skill 3 plus, strength 6, AP minus 2, damage 2. That means in a full size squad, you're going to have 20 of these attacks. Some factions may turn the nose up at that combat stat line, but in the Guard, that is quite juicy. 
If you compare this to Bulgrins with their Bulgrin Moles, you've got the same amount of attacks, but the big difference here is the Bulgrins are only AP minus one, which makes them eminently susceptible to Armor of Contempt and equivalent abilities. By simply having that extra pip of AP on those Nemesis Force weapons, it means that Grey Knight Terminators are much less susceptible to essentially getting cooked by Armor of Contempt and other abilities. If someone pops it, we still have a way of degrading that armor save a little bit. And I can't tell you the number of times when I've run my Borgrin into an enemy unit, they've used an arm of contempt or contempt like ability and i've completely bounced and then my ball grins they might have been able to hold on but they've definitely got the worst end of the combat Grey Knight Terminators, either they're still going to be reducing the enemy by 1 AP, or if you're fighting against something that doesn't have arm contempt that AP2 really starts to starts to be felt if you go against an enemy terminator or equivalent unit Having that AP2 means typically you're kicking them down to their 4 plus invulnerable save. And if you're fighting against Marines, you're starting to get them down to a 5 plus save. And, well, 5 plus saves are not something you want to rely upon. And this close combat capability is further enhanced by the Terminator Squad's abilities. They have got the unique hammer hand ability, which means each time this unit makes a charge move until the end of the turn, melee weapons are equipped by models in that unit have lethal hits. Now, realistically, it means you're probably going to generate about three lethal hits each time that you charge with a full strength unit. You're getting at 20 attacks, you know, roughly about three of those are going to become lethals. But it's still a nice little boost to your damage because it means you don't have to roll to wound. And it does mean that in a pinch, you can throw them in something which they're not normally suited to dealing with, like vehicles and monsters. Further to this, you've got the War Gear abilities. The Ancient Banner gives you another objective control, putting you to a total of 3 OC, giving you 15 OC from a 5-man squad. And even if you've lost a few guys and you're down to a 2-man squad, that's still going to give you 6 OC, which is more than enough objective control to outdo a lot of elite units which have only got 1 OC each. And if you have had your unit get battered, you can get back into the fight with the Nartesium, which means in your command phase, you can return one destroyed model to the bearer's unit, although you can't use this on attached characters. But you can do that every command phase. So if you lose a couple of guys and then your opponent doesn't have the capability to finish your unit off, well, in two turns, you'll be back up to full strength. Oh, and one last thing to mention about these guys, they have the right to teleportation ability, which means that if you have an Inquisitor attached to the unit, that Inquisitor gets Deep Strike as well. So yes, this does mean you could take Inquisitor Cotiers, have him lead a Grey Knight Terminator squad, have them Deep Strike onto the battlefield together, and Cotiers would benefit from the Hammer Hand ability of the Grey Knight Terminators, giving that lovely Nemesis Demon Hammer lethal hits. But I suppose that kind of naturally leads us on to how do we plan to use these guys in our guard army? The first thing to understand is you can only have one Grey Knight Terminator squad as allies. They are a requisitioned unit. And that means that in a strike force, you can only have one of them. Because of this and the fact that they are fixed at only five men in the squad you can't take up to 10 of them like you can with normal gray knights in their own index it is going to limit the usefulness of the unit i would love to have been able to take two or three of these things in a guard army juice them up to five ten man squads and basically had 20 to 30 terminators teleporting down and supported them with mucho guard firepower the dreams of gray knight termi blobs and rogal dorm spam unfortunately is not alive but that does not mean they do not have any use in your army. And if you are excited for these Grey Knight Terminators, you can still get a lot out of them. In my mind, I see them as a counter-attack unit, either deep striking or deploying them on the battlefield from the get-go. These guys are perfect for counter-punching the enemy once they have taken an objective. Maybe you've moved a scout mirror on, maybe you've taken a blob of guardsmen and pushed them early onto an objective and your opponent has come in with some fairly high value unit and swept them aside. Maybe they've charged in and finished the survivors off taking that objective away from you. 
Now, as a guard player, you have a couple of options there. You can try and move another unit onto the objective, but you might suffer a similar fate. You can try blasting the enemy off the objective, but if you shoot them off the objective, then you've denied the enemy the objective, but you've not resecured it for yourself. Here come the Grey Knight Terminators. You can rapid ingress them in, in your opponent's turn two, and that will get past the fact they've got a movement of five because then in your next turn, you can move them five inches closer and you should, in theory, only have a four inch charge to make to the enemy objective. The advantage they have in this regard over Bulgrins is the deep strike. You might deploy your Bulgrins on the left flank, but this could all be happening. The enemy could be pushing you off an objective on the right flank and your Bulgrins are never going to be able to get over there and be able to sort that situation out in a timely manner. But having a Grey Knight Terminators in reserve means that, oh no, my Bulgrins are on the left flank. Oh no, my opponent's pushing me on the right flank. Doesn't matter. I'll wrap an ingress there. And in my next turn, I'm going to be able to counter charge. And because they have a pretty durable stat line, they're not unkillable. Don't get me wrong, they're not unkillable. But they've got a two plus save. They've got that four up in vulnerable save. They've got three wounds. Because of that, your opponent is going to have to dedicate probably a lot more than they would want to to clear this unit away and if they don't wipe them out the Narthesium is going to come in and if that starts returning guys to the squad you could very very quickly get that an intensive an OC intensive unit back onto the objective but don't be afraid of having these guys on the board from the get-go I know that sounds crazy and there is this natural inclination to deep strike everything but sometimes it's not the right call and it shouldn't be an automatic reflex it should be a carefully considered maneuver what if you play an army like World Eaters? They're fast moving, they're going to be getting into your face straight away, and they're going to be naturally screening out a lot of the board because they're controlling so much of it because of their speed. In that situation, having your Grey Knights in reserve might mean that they end up deep striking down into or near your deployment zone anyway, and then they have to spend a turn walking around. It, it might just mean that they get charged and they do the charging. But if you have these guys on the board from the get-go, the world eaters or whichever fast or army it is comes running into your lines they make contact and then straight away you've got an asset which you can counter punch with and these guys like with Borgrin, they can take a charge you know they've got that two plus save they've got that three wounds they've got that four plus and vulnerable save but they can also do a charge as well or a third consideration is if you are facing a fast moving army that you know is gonna be coming at you, having these guys deep strike behind them can be a great way to throw a spanner in the works of your opponent. If you deep strike down five scions near an enemy objective, the enemy can probably clear that away with some spare firepower. If you deep strike down five terminators, then not only could they get you a few secondary points whilst they're at it? Bit of cheeky behind enemy lines or deploy locusts. But then the enemy has got to send something back towards their home objective or back towards their own lines to contain this and lock it down. Because if they don't, five Terminators are not something you want to run amok. I'm not saying they're going to be able to take down Titans or anything crazy like that. But considering a lot of people put fairly fragile units as their backfield home objective holders, Grey Knight Terminators can more than deal with that. They can more than bully those cheap backfield units. But I know what a lot of people are going to be asking. Mordian, should I include these guys in my army list or would I be better with just going with Tempesta Scions? I mean, they're pretty expensive Grey Knight Terminators. You can definitely get a Giga Blob and change of Scions. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. From a shooting perspective and maybe even from a general perspective, those Scions are going to be able to drop down and do a hell of a lot of damage. Probably more damage than the Grey Knight Terminators can do in shooting. Not in combat, but the Scion shooting is probably going to do more than the Grey Knight Terminator shooting and combat combined the turn that they drop in. But you have to look at the bigger picture. The Scions are the unit you want for cheaply deep striking down and just blasting an enemy objective. The Grey Knight Terminators, in my mind, fulfill a very different role. It's what we've been talking about. They're more close combat orientated. They're more nuanced. They're there for solving problems. Scions create problems for your opponent. They blast and blast and blast. Grey Knight Terminators solve problems for you. And what you need to decide 
is based on your local meta, based on the games that you typically play, and based on the tournament you're going to, and based on what else is in your army list, which one of those things do you need? Do you need a problem solver, or do you need a dilemma creator? Well, at least that's what I think. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you excited and interested in the allied Grey Knight Terminators? Or are you going to stick to the good old guard units of Bulgren and Scions? If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button. I know it's a little cringe asking for likes, guys, but it really does boost the video with the YouTube algorithm, especially when it's something like this, when we're not covering a core guard unit and we're covering something maybe a little bit more out there. And if you want to see more content like this, more unit reviews and more tactics videos, don't forget to subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more during glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. To a heartfelt thank you to Alex Dengal, Bon Bon Vert, Lord Pryor, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, Try Again Bragg, John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Seriously guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your support is incredible and it makes a huge difference Thank you so much. That's all for now. Hope you've all enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, see you guys next time.